Good morning from another day in sunny Malta. And today we are teaming up again with Saletto Travel. They picked us up from our hotel in Valletta and we are going to be discovering the island of Gozo. Now it is quite a journey over there. You've got to take a little boat that will take you across the sea to the island of Gozo. But that is all included, of course, in this tour. Today, we're gonna to be exploring the Sleepy Island, as it's also called, and seeing some of the main sites and main viewpoints that you're meant to see on Gozo. So I'm very, very excited to see what Gozo has to offer. But first, before we head over to Gozo and take the boat across, we have made a stop here in Golden Bay. So this is known as Riviera Martinique. The water is absolutely stunning. And also it's a sandy beach, which is quite rare for Malta. There aren't many sandy beaches. Of course, it is a very, very rocky island. But if you are looking for a sandy beach, you're gonna find it here. And it is absolutely stunning. There's a beautiful little cafe, bar, restaurant there as well. Now all across the coastline you'll find these watchtowers and of course they were absolutely necessary because of course Malta came under fire and under attack by many enemy ships such as the Turks, the Ottoman Empire and many others so you will see these very very old watchtowers. So there are two beach options, Riviera Martinique which is just over that side which we just saw before and Golden Bay Beach. They're both really amazing. You've got two options here and you can't go wrong with either. The water is stunning. There's a gentleman doing meditation, so that kind of gives you an idea of the ambience that you're gonna get here. Now the journey from Valletta over to Gozo, the ferry at Gozo, is about a 45 minute drive minimum, depending on the traffic. So we need to get this ferry back on the van. made it onto the ferry with just like at the nick of time. The trip across will cost 15 euros if you're gonna take your car with you or if you just wanna go without your car, it will cost five euros there and back. So it's pretty cheap and it's really convenient because it only takes around half an hour to get to Gozo. And on the way over there, you'll pass Camino Island, which is one of the three islands that make up Malta. And an interesting fact, only three people live there. It's just one family. And that is Camino. Now Camino Island also has some of the best places to go snorkeling and go swimming. And tomorrow we are actually going on a boat trip which is gonna take us around those places. So very excited for that. And Gozo, we are here. And we are at Gigantia temples, which also date back to 5,000 years ago. And I would absolutely add this to your itinerary because also the British noblemen and other wealthy individuals did when they did their grand tour, which is basically where they sailed throughout the Mediterranean and they always used to include Gozo on their itineraries and they would visit these temples and they would write about it, investigate it and just learn more about the history. Now there's lots of speculation on why they were built and who they were built by, but there is some talk about it being farmers because of course agriculture was very, very valuable and they are built in, you know, agriculturally rich areas near the sea, but also rituals used to take place in these temples and that would consist of, you know, sitting around a fire, also some sacrifices of some animals, but yeah, they're really rich in history and it's really, really cool to just wander around and see. And the great thing about these temples is that it is all outdoors. It's not covered with the, um, the like covering and it just allows you to be outside. And the limestone used for these temples as well uh, is a little bit different to the temples that we have seen on the mainland of Malta yesterday at Hajar'im. And you'll notice that the limestone used here will actually withstand the elements a lot better. And that's why the structure, it still stands. And it's very, very cool to see. I still just cannot get my head around the fact that people would just carry these enormous boulders and was able to build structures like this. This just baffles me.
and we are in Calypso and right next to Calypso there is Ramallah Beach and this is one of the only sandy beaches on Gozo so if you do want to go for a swim in some beautiful blue water that is your place but this is a viewpoint which they've obviously closed off here so you can't actually get to the end but you can get a view from up there and there is also Calypso's cave but it has been closed off Lots of treasures were found down there, some Roman statues and some other wonderful old archaeological stuff, but you can't get down there anymore, unfortunately. And we have come to Duera, which has a lovely area to go for a swim. It does seem that the majority of people that come here come to go scuba diving, though, and the water is Actually, it's blue here, so it's really, really beautiful. It is pebbly, so it's not a sandy beach, but there are a few places that you can go and eat, some restaurants in this area, some cafes where you can, you know, grab a nice refreshment and just chill out in this beautiful area. And this is also a place where you can take boat tours through the cave and it will take you around the shoreline so you can get a really, really nice perspective of Gozo. From the sea. So this whole area in Duera has lots of places for you to just wander around and just admire the cliff edges, the big rocks. Just over there we've got fungus rock which is the one that's sticking out and we've got crocodile rock there and the huge cliff edges and the water is so so beautiful and blue but over there it's green which is pretty weird, pretty interesting. But it is quite cool to walk around here in this sort of like rocky barren wasteland because this if you do watch Game of Thrones is where Khaleesi and her husband was over there and also the site of the old Azure window is just over here in Duera where I'm pointing right now but unfortunately it is no longer in existence because a storm in 2017 resulted in the collapse of the Azor window which is tragedy really because it was an absolutely beautiful site as you can see from these images that I'm showing you right now. But that is Duera and we're going to continue on. And we have made it to the Citadella here in Gozo. This is also called Victoria which is the capital of Gozo and it's a really cool area to just wander around and that is exactly what we are going to do. So a lot of the citadella was actually destroyed in 1693 in the earthquake so some of it has been rebuilt and restored that's why it does look a bit newer but you can still see like parts of the wall part of the out exterior that does remain from how it originally looked. If you come to the top of the citadella you've got this beautiful panoramic walk around this entire area and you get wonderful views all across Gozo you can see into the distance and if you're lucky and it's not too hazy you can sort of see Malta in the distance but the views from up here are very very pretty and it's a really really pleasant place to come and just wander through and just walk around all the streets are really beautiful you can get some fantastic photos and right now we are super lucky of course because because of covid it's very very quiet and ordinarily it would be very very busy here so if you get the chance add this to your list definitely I'm really enjoying gozo so far if you're in malta you should just make the day trip over and of course this tour is one that does that and it solves that problem of the headache and the hassle of planning a trip so of course if you want to book this trip the link for that is going to be in the description so you can book this tour with Dennis and Saleto Travel and obviously it includes the driver and will take you to all of these spots and we have stopped off in a little cafe within the Citadella I've got an iced latte and that's got a beer I also got a lemon and freshly squeezed orange juice. Dennis, obviously with the sparkling water. And it is lovely in here. It was absolutely necessary for this little stop. So, dying for some food. We stopped off at Mick Sims, this little bakery, to get some more pastizzi. We got a pea one and also a chicken one. Normally, the traditional one is ricotta cheese and the pea one. But this time, I'm going to try the chicken one. 
Ah, oh, this P1 is absolutely incredible. It is so flaky, so tasty. It's just delicious. Now to try the chicken one, which isn't normally the usual, but we'll see how this tastes. Mm. It's like a chicken pie, but with pastry. So, so good. But I have the masterpiece here, which I've been looking forward to, which is a traditional anchovy and spinach pie with short crust pastry. Oh, okay. Sounds yummy. Taste it. Looks it. great. It's rather hot though, this one. So it turns out it's actually the Sphinx place, not the Mix Sims. But I had to get another because the price of these things are so cheap. 40 cents for a Pat's Pizza. That is absolutely mental. Cheapest snack, super delicious, absolute must in Victoria. And the next stop is Zlendi Bay. And there's a very, very small beach here. So it's not really like your public beach that you're probably used to or Ramilla like we saw before. But there's a nice restaurant to look out on the water. It's a very lovely bay here. Obviously, it's a great place to go for a swim and there are some boat excursions as well that can take you out on the water. So yeah, nice little stop. It's also a nice little area to go look around some shops, ice cream parlor. Not bad, what do you think? It's all right? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Come here for a few hours, just relax, cool off in the water. Yeah, it's good. So right now we're actually in an area called Fontana and it's super interesting to stop here because you can actually see these little areas where women of the village will actually come and do their washing. So they'll bring down a basket with their clothes, their washing up liquid and they will use these freshwater fountains that run all year long to do their washing. It is super cool to see because it is a super traditional Maltese thing to do in Gozo Island. So pretty cool to see. So we are en route back to the mainland of Malta, but unfortunately we did just miss the boat, but not to worry because these boats do come every 45 minutes. Thank, All right. you, thank you so much, Dennis. You're the man. Thank you so much, everybody. It's, it's been a real pleasure. Yeah, no, you've been amazing for the last three days. <laughs> these tours, guys, book in the description below these tours. Keep the best. They're, they're all going to be linked in the description <laughs> below, so make sure you book with Saletto and Dennis. My man, see you later. Cheers. Bye. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Top driver. <laughs> And we are back in the hotel room and what an incredible day today has been exploring all of Gozo with Saletto Travel. I can highly recommend this tour. Actually, I can recommend all the tours because Dennis is so, so knowledgeable. Jonathan has been excellent taking us around, being so patient with us. And it is just a fantastic way to see so much of Malta, see so much of Gozo in such a short space of time. And it basically, is going to allow you to determine exactly where you want to spend more time in your stay. So when you do return, let's say, or if you have a longer period of time that you're spending on the island, it's gonna allow you insight into the places that you do want to return to, the beaches that you wanna spend more time on, and maybe some of the bays or some of the citadellas potentially that you want to wander around for longer. So yeah, in my opinion, big thumbs up for all of these tours. Again, they're all gonna be linked in the description of this video. You should definitely check them out. But now it is 7.30 p.m. and we have a dinner reservation on the rooftop of our hotel. So we're gonna be able to catch the sunset and I'm very, very excited for that. I think it's gonna be beautiful. And I'm really looking forward to it for a relaxing evening. So let's go for dinner. So we have come to the rooftop of the Embassy Valletta Hotel. And I just want to say the view from up here is probably one of the best sunset views that you're going to get in Valletta. Like it's absolutely stunning. And of course you've got the swimming pool here, which is all lit up. The whole area that's lit up. The cocktails are good. And that's where the sun sets. So if you come for, you know, the good time, then you're going to get an incredible sunset. We've got two steaks coming, so I'm very, very excited for those. And yeah, really, really impressed with the hotel so far. So we've already 
had a indoor romantic style restaurant. We've had a terrace style restaurant for you guys to check out. And now I'm bringing you guys the best rooftop style restaurant you can eat at in Valletta. So make sure that you add this to your list of places. I'm very excited for this dinner. And that is the end of yet another video from here in Malta. Guys, if you have enjoyed this one, please hit the like button down below. It really helps my channel and promote this content to more people. Also consider subscribing by hitting the red button and also press the bell button so you get notified when I post new videos. And also there's gonna be more videos from here in Malta in this series if you wanna check those out. But as always, I will see you next week.